So here we are, taking a look again at two huge colossal contenders. Now first and foremost, I wanna let you know because you saw it in the clip and you saw in the title, this is Azul versus Majolica, but it is not stained glass of Cintra and it is not the Summer Pavilion. This is the basic Azul and the reason being is because it's the most available and it's the one most people are familiar with. So we're doing Azul versus Majolica. I have no clue if I'm pronouncing Majolica right. I know it's hard to get, but I know that they are both phenomenal tile laying games that share some similarities, but also some big differences, which is what we're gonna be diving into today in this yet another huge battle of a couple of games. It's, but here's the thing, these two are two technicians, right? They're both smart, they're both technicians, kind of like the Iron Man match between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Both of them are some of the best that's ever been in the ring. They're technicians, they know what they're doing. That's kind of what we're doing with Azul and Majolica. They both know what they're doing really well. They're both thinky, they're not super heavy games, but they're both similarly themed and similarly styled. So let's take a look and see which one will be crowned the winner. couple of important pieces of criteria. We judge based on presentation, both the, what I call the walking at a con and seeing it, oh wow, what is that? Versus the top down view and components. We also take a look at the actual mechanics themselves of each game, which would be the direct user interface and the indirect user interface. And then we also look at the total package, the Lex Luger, if you will. So we will take a look at all of that, come out and see which one comes out on top in this huge death match of tile placing games. It's kind of mundane to be a death match, but that's what we're gonna do. So there's a lot to take in and it actually doesn't even fit all in the frame. We're gonna zoom out here in just a second, but I like that snap effect. Essentially, you'll notice the main board here has these sets of colorful tiles. There are design tiles here. You'll also start with a beginner tile, which are worth three points for the beginner design. Your goal is to fill these tiles, fill these cards, with the um, tiles to fill it and then get the points for it. However, there are a couple of interesting mechanics about this. To get tiles, you can either choose an outside edge, which currently there are one, two, three, four outside edges. That will change though, depending on what people do. You can choose an outside edge and flip over all four of the tiles that are on that outside edge. Again, it won't be four always, but for now. You'll flip those over and then you'll reach over here to the small bag and take one of each tile that you flipped over. So uh, a red one, a blue one, and two yellows. You'll then place them into your panes right here, your different windows. Now again, this will be sitting above one of these window panes here, one of the first three. When you do that, you'll notice that this has certain rules. In order to run the pane as it is, or run the window, uh, you'll have to have three of the same type on this side and three of the same type on this side, but you are trying to fill this card. When you do that, you will have to, put, that's what these little spades down here at the bottom means. When you, let's just say you get three yellow and three green here, that window will run or cascade as it were. You have to move one of the tiles from here up onto your card and you can move a second one. Now, once you do that, let's, let's just say you had three yellows and three green. Well, boom, now you've got a green up here and a yellow here sitting on this card ready to be filled, which means you only need a yellow to fill it. You then notice this symbol here, this arrow. Anything you didn't move up, which would be four more tiles, assuming you didn't move, uh, you only move, uh, assuming you move both of them. Those four tiles will move over to here. This could technically complete this window, which would allow you to forcibly put one to whatever pane is up there, and then you have the option of moving two up. Now, let's just say you don't wanna to move two up. Once that window runs, you'll move these over to here. You'll do the same thing, move those up, and then whatever's left over, you have to place a tile, you have to break a tile, then whatever moves over to here, same rule, except you don't place it, you put it in the city hall, which is a little sideboard up here that essentially gets you some wild bonuses or some points. Once one goes to the city hall, it takes that slot. You then move anything that you have left over, if you do, all the way back to the beginning. You could potentially cascade, boom, to boom, to boom, to boom, all the way back, boom, boom, boom. It's really hard to do like that, but each of these has different rules. So for instance, this is three and three, this is two, two, and two, this is two and two, or two and two, it doesn't matter, and this is for the same one. So you do have to be careful, but what that allows you to do or what it forces you to do is think ahead and think, okay, wait, 
should I go ahead and just do this one window even if it's going to stop cascading here or here? Or do I start loading these sides up to where I can have that massive cascade of and then you're able to fill these cards and score the points and points and points like that. In order to get these cards, your option of a turn could instead be to take a single tile from one of the outside edges. And let's just say this had happened earlier. Someone had already taken these. Okay. Well, now here's your outside edge. Here's your outside edge here, here. And then I, the little bit there is weird. It's, it's tricky. But the outside edge becomes, you know, whatever showing. You can either take a single tile and rearrange your window cards, or you can take a single tile and take one of the new ones that are out there. This is how you get new window cards. But that is essentially the game. Now, once there's a certain number of these flipped over, you'll flip everything back up and shuffle them, and then you'll have another uh, set of tiles to choose from. But the strategy of this game comes from getting these set up to where when you start cascading, you just as much as you can basically setting up to where you one single action of running a window does more than just filling one or two cards hopefully you can get most of your cards uh, at least you know worked on but hopefully filled with one single cascade action of a cross so it is a game all about setting up for the future and that is how majolica plays now i'm not taking for granted the fact that most of you have played or at least seen azul since it is much more readily available looking at you walmart and target now Normally, you would set up all of these circles depending on player count, but I just wanted you to be able to see it here uh, of these little starburst tiles that go out. That is the most beautiful part about Azul is the fact that these nice, chunky, plastic starburst-shaped tiles do look really good and they are three-dimensional as opposed to uh, Majolica, which they are flat. However, they still look good on the table from the top-down view, which this has more of the appeal from the walking from the side view. Now, start your points on zero, obviously. You gain points in a couple different ways in this game. You can also lose points pretty easily. There are some in-game goals. For instance, if you have a straight line, you get two points for every completed line you have. You have, you get ten points if you have all five of one of the colors out here. So it's one, two, three, four, five. You get ten points for each set of those. And seven points for each vertical column that is filled, which is easier to do, obviously. Uh, I'm sorry, it's harder to do, which is why it's worth more points. Now what you're going to do on your turn, you're going to choose one of these circles that's out here you're gonna take one color of tiles off of there. So for instance, if I choose here, I would choose all three of these and kick anything else to the middle. Now had I chosen the yellow on there, I would take the yellow and kick these into the middle. These would go wherever I choose to put them. So if I put it here, at the end of the round, there's a move over and score section. This one only requires one to be here. This one requires two, three, four, and five. So had I chosen this instead, well, I could go ahead and put these here. Or let's just say it's not my it's my turn and I want to plan ahead. I go, okay, well, I'm going to put the three there. If it comes back to me and this is still here, well, I can push those to the middle and place that there. That now means that I have these ready to go. Now, there are a couple negative things that can happen. If you don't have somewhere to play said tiles that are left over towards the end of the round, you have to place them down here and you lose points based on each one of these. And these are not cumulative. It's not three here. It's one and one and two and two and two and three and three. So you can lose a lot of points in the round if you're not careful. But you'll then move this over, put these back into the mush pot, and basically they'll go back into the bag eventually. However, if you're the first person to choose a color from the middle here, you go first, but you do put the first player token here, so you lose a point. The thing is, though, you could luck out and have a whole bunch of the same color you want there. Now, the downside is five is the most, right? You can never place more than five. If I were to take this and there were six sitting here, the sixth one would have to go down here. So that's the other way to lose points. But essentially, you're going to keep doing this and moving over and placing the tiles. And at the end of the game, now you will score a point per tile and per adjacent tile so if you can kind of get one of these to work where when you're laying out tiles you're essentially scoring or not per adjacent it's per tile in that row or column you can get some really nice point combo so that's two there this would be three had i had this though this would be one two one two three It'd be worth five points so there are ways to combo and get points but at the end of the game you're looking to have these major bonuses plus the points you've set up by doing that now the difference is on the back of this there's a blank version so you're not beholden to those patterns. You still can't have more than one of the same color in a row or a column. However, it is nice that you are able to have a little bit more flexibility on that. So after looking at everything there, I have to say 
There are a couple things to note. First of all, let's talk about presentation, which one looks better on the table. Well, to be honest, they're pretty much from a bird's eye walking past at a convention. Oh, wow, what's that over there? They're basically the same. I got This is a total stalemate. They both look great on the table. If I'm going to give just a little bit of an edge to one, it's going to be Azul, though, because the tiles are thicker. They're actual plastic tiles instead of the actual cardboard, right? But as far as looking top down at the game, they both look phenomenal. They both look great. They both look amazing. The components in Azul are just a little bit better because of those plastic tiles. However, you don't really need it to be plastic because the cardboard ones in Majolica just to look great with that glossy cover on them. Now, as far as we've done the look, now let's talk about the actual gameplay mechanics themselves. I do like about Azul that it has the flip sides where you can do it where, as stated, with the printed board, or you can play on the back and kind of play a little bit more loosey-goosey. A lot of replay value there. Um, that being said, I like the mechanics of Majolica better. So the win for the mechanics here goes to Majolica. The fact that those cascade and cascade and cascade and cascade and maybe all the way back to the beginning, there's such a strategy in Majolica of setting up 18, 13, 14 turns ahead of time and going, eventually this is going to pay off and you're going to go all the way down and it's so rewarding. However, just know both of these games do rely on strategy and planning way ahead, Azul is a little more forgiving about it. And when I say forgiving, I don't mean that you're going to lose if you don't plan ahead in Majolica. I just mean you're not going to get as many points as you would if you thought it out. You can still win the game playing a couple turns ahead, but those cascades are where your points just really stack up. Uh, so, Majolica gets the win for the mechanics themselves there. Now, as far as total package, which one do you take home if you can only take home one of these games? Again, we're talking about Azul, the main game, not the two versions that have come out since. So if you're going to ask me which of these two is the absolute winner, I'm going to tell you, if you can get your hands on it, get your hands on Majolica because I like the way it cascades and stacks up the strategy much better. I think it's just a better, more solid game to me. I like the fact that you're pulling either tiles out of a row or you're choosing that one or two specific tiles that you want. You're having to kind of think ahead and say, well, I can do the bird in the hand now or bird in the bush later, you know what I'm saying, or two in the bush later, whatever the phrase is. But the idea is you have to think ahead and doing that in Majolica is so much more rewarding. So at the end of the day, the one that is crowned the winner, Mr. WrestleMania, as it were, would in fact be for me Majolica. Taking the victory, taking a victory lap, a little sweet chin music to the face, and maybe even a little 1998 Montreal, if you know what I mean. So. That is the winner of today, Majolica. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, at Dice Tower Brian. Till next time, we'll see you. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.